Good afternoon, Counseling 500 classmates. I want to start this video just by stating that any resources I reference throughout it will be cited below in APA format. And then I want to move on to what we read this week. We read about some professions that we may enter once we exit this program or things we aspire to be, such as a biblical counselor, a lay counselor, a Christian counselor, a pastoral counselor. And then there was this one that was a professional counselor that operates out of a Christian worldview. And I think that's where myself and possibly a lot of you guys fit into. But I, it took me a minute because I thought, how is that different than a Christian counselor? Because that was just stated right before that. And I realized a Christian counselor is someone that's going to be counseling most likely a Christian population. And if it's not a Christian population, it's someone that wants to be a part of the Christian population or wants to know more about the Christian doctrine for themselves. Whereas the professional counselor operating out of a Christian worldview will be counseling a very diverse population and possibly people that have no interest in Christianity at all. And for myself, I want to work with at-risk teenagers. That's who I've already worked with in the past, just not in the counseling profession. And so for those, they don't have, well, most likely do not have a developed worldview at that point in life. What they do have comes from their parents or their family, what they've been raised in. And I know that from the ACA Code of Ethics, it's not my place to impose those views. It's not my position to put my own beliefs on any of my clients, whether it's teenager or not. And I think that we have to be very careful because we can impose our views subtly or even subconsciously where we don't know it. We can say things that just give a hint of our views or make someone else feel like they need to feel the way that we do. So as professional counselors moving forward, it's something we have to be very self-aware of. And I think that a lot of that also can fit into the integration models that we read about this week and how we view those. Because if we're operating out of a model that states that Christianity and psychology cannot coexist, we're going to be more likely to put our views into that, into our counseling relationships when we shouldn't. For myself, I, I aspire to operate out of the allies model that says that both can exist. Because God's truth is truth. And there is room for psychology in that. In my personal belief, I do think that there will be times that we have to use a lot of principles that we've learned in psychology prior to this program and integrate them with what we learn about counseling from this Christian theology worldview. The two of them can go together. But my end goal is honestly just to be a light for my clients, whether it's teenager or not, for them to see that light because that light that we carry inside of us is Christ-like, like that is the love of Christ that we're showing our clients without ever stating our worldview. So I think it's important that we just be that light in our clients' lives.